The Switch is the latest offering from Nintendo, and the closest thing it has to any kind of competition in the marketplace is the PlayStation Vita from Sony Interactive Entertainment. In many ways, these two devices share similar characteristics, but they are also offering two very distinct experiences for portable players. So the question remains, which is the better option for you? Well, let's find out. Welcome to my newest video, where I stack the PlayStation Vita up against Nintendo Switch. Hardware. Now I think it's fairly obvious which machine is more capable considering the PlayStation Vita was released in 2012 and the Switch in 2017. It's obvious that the NS is far more capable in the hardware specs department, but don't count the PS Vita out just yet. Both of these machines, when properly utilized and taken advantage of, are capable of producing stellar visuals that look amazing. Now onto the actual physical hardware. The Vita is a very unique handheld. It features dual analog sticks, which was a first for its time, your standard PlayStation Face buttons, a capacitive 540p QHD OLED screen, a rear touchpad, and six-axis accelerometers and motion sensors like those found in DualShock 3 and DualShock 4. Whether you own the 1000 or the 2000 series, they are both very similar in terms of design and function, with some minor differences between them. Both the 1000 and 2000 systems are well designed with the 1000 looking like a premium games machine that you can tell Sony went all out on, and the 2000 looking more like a casual player's model. For those of you who like colors, the original models were available in black, white, silver, blue, and red, while the 2000 series has had two whole different sets of colors. But for the sake of time, you can currently go out and buy the new PS Vitas in the Japan Asia territories in jet black, glacier white, aqua blue, neon orange, metallic red, and silver. To simply put it, there are tons of options for the discriminating buyer, not to mention all the limited edition variants that are available between all of the models. In terms of build quality, both models are built well, but beware, scratches will run rampant if you plan on using this thing without front and rear screen protectors, so please keep that in mind. Switching things up a bit, the NS is the most uniquely designed handheld I think I've ever seen. It features a tablet-like design with removable and rechargeable controllers that take the form of the left and right Joy-Cons. On top of this, the system can be docked to output its HD picture from the tablet screen into your HD or 4K Ultra HD television set, which, let's be honest, is pretty cool, giving you the best of both handheld and console world. In terms of general aesthetics, I like the Switch. Not only does it have a full set of action buttons, but clickable analog sticks and a full set of triggers. And the general grey design reminds me of the first generation of Microsoft Surface tablets, but I love the idea of being able to change out the Joy-Cons on a whim with different colored options, thus making customization easier than ever before seen on any home console or portable. The NS also features a kickstand to prop it upright, but it's quite small and doesn't exactly do the best job propping the system up across all surface types. Hard surface tops are usually okay, but for others like sofas, mattresses, or anything else you'd imagine playing this system on will cause the unit to fall over or the kickstand to snap off completely. I personally think that Nintendo should have designed the kickstand on the back to run all the way from one side to the other to evenly distribute and handle the unit's weight, and given more options for adjusting the angle of the display unit itself. But I digress, what's here is alright and isn't a bad job for our first iteration in a new platform, and many of the issues that I and many others have complained about can easily be addressed in later revisions. But at the end of the day, I think that by and large the Switch is designed very well, striking a perfect blend of form and function with plenty of options for customization at the user's expense, of course. In terms of I.O., both systems utilize internal, upgradable storage, and both the PS Vita 2000 and NS utilize standard micro-USB formats for charging and other I.O. Unfortunately for the PS Vita Slim, it utilized the same proprietary SD cards that the original Vita did, and while they have certainly fallen in price since 2012, they are still a far bit more costly compared to modern SD cards. As for the NS, it utilizes standard micro SDXC cards, up to 2 terabytes of storage, and thanks to the NS's micro USB Type-C integration, it's capable of both data transfer, charging, and audio video output, all from one port. In many ways, the NS did everything the PS Vita did wrong or failed to do, and the results speak for themselves. You can just look for yourself to see how fast this thing is flying off the shelves. And considering this thing is coming right off the coattails of the abysmal failure that was the Wii U, I have to give credit where credit is due. So props to Nintendo. User Interface 
The PS Vita's main UI is referred to as Live Area, and it's known for its bubbly or Skittles-like appearance. It has apps pre-installed like PlayStation Store, PlayStation 3 and PS4 Remote Play, trophies, messaging, cross-party chat, and others, but it also has customizable themes that can be created by the user or downloaded via PlayStation Network. Whether or not you personally like the interface, I will leave that up to you, but it seems that Sony has certainly chosen function over form. And while it looks dated by modern UI standards, it is still perfectly functional since it's designed around a touch input. The NS's UI is clean, simple, and easy to use, and Nintendo has definitely struck a perfect balance once again between function and form, but it is basic. So basic, in fact, that the only two themes available for the UI are basic black and basic white. While it's nothing flashy, it is clean, easy to navigate, and clutter-free, all of which are pluses. Where it falls short is a lack of customizable themes, which is a shame because I would love to see a splash of color take in the form of Nintendo's intellectual properties spread across this minimal-looking interface. Do not get me wrong. I love minimalism, especially when it comes to the interfaces that I use to navigate my devices, but the NS's interface is really stretching it. Games. This is obviously the most important category for anyone looking into either of these platforms, but at the end of the day, it boils down to this. One handheld is offering a PlayStation experience, while the other is offering the Nintendo experience. Both systems have well over a thousand different games available, with the Switch receiving the latest AAA releases from both third-party publishers as well as Nintendo's own in-house studios, and plenty of indie developers are supporting the platform as well. The Switch has plenty of titles that you won't get anywhere else like Mario Odyssey, Zelda Breath of the Wild, Smash Ultimate, Pokemon Pikachu and Eevee editions, and the list goes on and on. As for the PS Vita, there are plenty of games for you to look into as well. While RPGs and JRPGs are the system's bread and butter at this point because it's been supported in the Japanese Asia markets, there are still plenty of other titles available like Uncharted, Wipeout, Killzone Mercenary, Ridge Racer, Need for Speed, Child of Light, Little Big Planet, Tearaway, and many other indies and AAA games. With that being said though, while the PS Vita has a great selection of games in its own library, it isn't limited to its own. PS Vita is backwards compatible with PSP titles and PS1 classics that are all available via digital download on PlayStation Store. But there's even more. With the help of the Remote Play application, it allows you to tether your PS Vita system with a PS4 or PS4 Pro, and this allows you to play almost every PS4 game anywhere you want at any time, whether you're at home or outside of your home anywhere in the world so long as both systems are connected to sufficient Wi-Fi networks. This gives you access to not only the PS Vita's library, but the PSP's, the PS1's, and the PS4's too, taking the greatness that is the PS4 experience and making it portable. Regardless of who the winner is for you personally, I have opted for both systems getting the best of both worlds, and since I find myself out and about constantly, taking both the Nintendo and PlayStation experience with me is a fantastic way to play games, and I would personally recommend that you do the same. And remember to have fun playing.